Hello, my squishies. It's Friday night. The first Friday of the month. Yes, it is the first Friday of the month. It's felting time. So I'm going to give everybody a cup because we're doing this live. I'm going to give everyone a couple of minutes to pop in because six o'clock on the dot is very organized. Um, but while we're doing that, I'm going to show you that haven't joined us before that we're doing this after the fact, the basics of felting. Then I'm going to tell you some interesting stories about today while we're felting today's uh, picture. I'm very distracted already. It's only going to go downhill from here. <laughs> we'll be fine. We can do this together. I'll just <laughs> when someone's in the chat, the chat, uh, give me a shout. Oh, loud and clear. Excellent. We are here. So right, I'll start rambling on about felting and then story time and then felting time. So in your kit, you've got a few different things. You'll have a foam mat. So this protects your surfaces, makes felting easier. Always felt onto the foam mat. Hello, everybody. People are coming in. Uh, I'm already distracted. It's fine. We're fine. We're professionals here. Yeah, so you've got your foam mat. You've got this is called pre felt. This is what we're going to felt the picture onto. The picture stays on this. So this is going to be essentially our canvas. And then we've got our needles. So these are, oh, get in. <laughs> I know, Robert, it, I started off like this. I cannot blame you tonight at all. You're in the clear. <laughs> Normally it's Robin's fault that I'm, uh, <laughs> I get distracted and rambly. But tonight it's my own fault and the fault of my visitor that I've got tonight. But that'll be it for a minute. First, we've got to go to business first. Um, so these are your felting needles. They're sharp and stout oh, and focus. They're sharp and stabby. Please do not stab yourself with them. Um, they do break occasionally. The trick to not breaking them as often is always stab in and out and never in and then bend because it's when you're bending they're more likely to hello they're more likely to break if you do break it always find the broken all the broken bits and dispose of it safely yes yeah, so and avoid stabbing your hand that's a nice thing about flat felting is we can have this hand far away and less likely to stab ourselves. i will still stab myself but less likely but to make holding these a little bit easier in our kits we've also got needle felting tulip or holder these are really handy to make it but a little more easier a little more easier my english is really good tonight um, to, <laughs> to hold the needle but to work these there's a little peg in that end there oh no has your kit not arrived ah you can chat along with us tonight and if it's not arrived by monday give me a shout and i'll get it i'll get another one out to you and then they'll both arrive on the same day which is generally what happens with lost parcels but yeah i've lost a couple of parcels recently as well i'm like no um yes where was i <laughs> distracting uh the you've got the little peg in the end here pull out this peg and then you can pop your needle in the wee groove with the hook over the smaller end and then pop that smaller end back in there and then you're ready to stab. I'll do that one more time. So you've got your little peg there, pull out the little peg, pop your needle in the groove and then pop the skinny end back in there and you're good to go. Oh, and while I remember when it's fresh in my mind, uh, so we're doing this live just now but these are all left up so when you get your kit later on you can felt along so after the fact you're welcome to pause me rewind me fast forward me do anything that helps or if in the case of my parents love you you're also welcome to mute me and you don't have to listen to my rambling you can just watch the felting I love telling people that I think they're looking for a mute button in real life but there isn't one Unless it's chocolate. Maybe that's my mute button. Anyway, <laughs> last but not least. <laughs> Hi mum. The most important thing is the felt. So these are all the colours that we're going to play with tonight. 
These are mostly Shetland. I think this is Cheviot. So they're wool that's come off the sheep. It's been washed. Some of it's been dyed. Some of it is the natural colours. And when we work with this, I'm going to say this a lot, less is more. So we're going to take just little bits and work with little bits at a time. And there is a trick to doing that. So you can see when I pull it like this, that's the full length of the the fibre, the, the sheep's hair. So if I was to have my hands too close together and try to pull it out, I'd be pulling on both ends and it wouldn't come apart. And if there's any twist in your tops, this is called tops or rowing tops, it's also not going to come apart because the twist is what holds it together and makes it into yarn. So make sure it's flat or not twisted. Put your hands nice and far apart and then gently pull out little sections. Have I forgotten anything? Oh, so tonight we're doing a round one. We're going back to the old school because I think this one just looks so cute round. So we've got your, got your frame there, but I'll show you how to use the frame at the end. But uh, for those of you who don't want to see the finished product, close your eyes now. But this is my little sketch. That's uh, a sketch. It's not a finished felting, which is why <laughs> there's no outline on this one. Um, so we're going to make this little guy, little Christmas Robin. Okay, you can open your eyes again if you didn't want to see it. But so let's start with the background and work our way forward. So he's so cute. This one's really cute. The first one I did, which I sent a photo to my parents, not so cute. <laughs> Looks a little bit deranged, but it's fine. The second take two was adorable. So we're going to take some of the sky blue. And I'm just going to lay it out. Now the background, when I was looking for inspiration online and looking at little photos of robins everywhere, because the robin's so tiny, it's always like zoomed into. So the background's always fuzzy in the pictures. So we're not going for like a focused picture in the background. We're just putting in some colour and letting it be like as if it was a zoomed in macro photo. So you can put, if you've got colours that aren't here, those of you that have felt it before, you can put in any sort of variation of colour. If you want a more autumn scene, you can use browns and blues. But I thought, I didn't think actually, I just put green in because I like the green because it's my favourite colour. Well, green and purple. So I'm going to overlap the blues and the greens so there's no sort of defining line. So that'll give the blurry out of focus look. And then I'm going to start felting in. Now, for those of you that haven't felted before, the joy of felt is, especially at this stage, you can just lay it down and move it and see how it looks. Even after you've felt it in a little bit, you can still pick it up and move it. So we're going to start just lightly stabbing all over. Just to sort of lock, just lightly locking in these. So today I have a very special visitor. He's in the next room, currently probably asleep on the sofa. But I'm looking after my old flatmate's doggo. Uh, I can say his name, it's Coolin. He is absolutely gorgeous, been with me all day. He came and woke me up at eight o'clock this morning and we've had a lovely day together. But now he's a very tired, I mean, I say puppy, he's not a puppy, he's four. He's a very tired puppy. And when he came in, we came in here about 20 minutes ago because I've been up, not in the shop all week. And he just lay himself on the sofa and went, I will be here. So he might come through and say hello or he might just stay on the sofa and nap. But he's a well rest, well, well run and is now rested. But we had a lovely day. We went around the local museum. You can take dogs in. So I took him around the museum for a little snip of all the things while I was being educated about museums. We did a tour of all the high street shops that let dogs in. 
and just said hello to everybody. It was an awesome day. There we go. Oh, we can even put in... Oh, I didn't put this in the... <laughs> He's... Well, I call him Puppy. He's not Puppy. His name is Coolin. But yes, I need to get a dog called Puppy. I just call him the puppy, even though he's four. So I'm putting in some clouds as well. So I've just taken some of the white. The white is not so... To... Is it? Huh. He's, well, his owner's named him after the Kulin Mountains. But that is genius. Maybe he is a dog called Puppy. He, oh my god, I'm even more confused now. <laughs> right, was so these ones here are tops. But this white one is slightly different. It's called a sliver. You'll see it's slightly more rustic. It's been processed less. It's got slightly more bits and knobbly bits and is a bit wavier. But it makes wonderful clouds and stuffing. So we're going to pop some clouds in here. I'm going to tell his owners that they've named their dog Puppy. Although I'm still slightly disappointed they didn't call him Rolo because when I first met him they brought him into where I was working because uh, his one of his owners worked there as well in a cardboard box that was used for toilet rolls and he's also the colour of a Rolo with like caramel highlights and dark brown so I think he should have been called Rolo but now that I know Kulin is Gaelic for Puppy, that kind of makes it better. Also, I have a confession to make. I'm all, all about oversharing this week. So me and Killen had a lovely day out, but then we got home and we were snuggling on the sofa until I had to come because it's been my day. <laughs> it's been my day. <laughs> <laughs> it's been my day off today uh, and we were, I was really cozy and it was really nice I'm like oh I really wanted to felt long because I love the felt long but also I'm really warm and it's toasty and now that I have this amazing flat that is literally 30 seconds away from the shop I might still be in my dressing gown I mean I'm fully dressed underneath but <laughs> I didn't want to take it off so I put my jacket over it Walked along to the shop, met some friends on the way who had a good giggle at me and now just took my jacket back off and I am cosy and toasty in the shop in my dressing gown. I did take my slippers off. That was, I drew the line. I'll walk to the, the, sh the local shop in my slippers because it's literally the bottom of my door, but not my shop. Okay, I'm putting off putting this robin in, so let's put some robin in. So I'm very toasty in my uh, dressing gown. It's a house coat, it's not a dressing gown. So we're going to take some of the slivers and we're going to make a tiny wonky snowman is the best way to describe my thought process. So we're going to make a little ball and using the frame, plonk it down and check. It's sort of the right size. You want it to be... Wait, should I actually measure it this time? Oh I might actually measure it this time. Also, I like that the comments have gone quiet after my uh, dressing gown story. <laughs> so what's that? So that's sort of five and a bit centimetres. So yeah, so about five centimetres. Or the length of my thumb, depending. I'm just going to plump him just a tiny bit. I mean, I say a little bit below center. <laughs> Hello! Yes, I am living the glamorous life today. Also, I went around the museum. Be proud of me. It was amazing. That's all your mum's fault. You can blame her. And I saw the dress. They have a dress in the museum that's a Victorian dress. And it's made from beetle shells. He goes, so there is Snowman part one. 
I mean, if you do want to do a sn if you I think the dress with the beetle shells was pretty epic. And also there was an ancient Mackenzie Tartan uh, kilt, which looked epic. I was very much enjoying that. And then Coolin decided that he'd had enough of being inside and wanted to be outside, so we went out. Yeah, so if your Robin doesn't, doesn't work out, you can always make this a snowman. There's no judgement here. <laughs> So we've got part one, we've got our nice, what size did it end up being? Yeah, five centimetre ish round ball. And then we're going to pop another ball for his head, but it's not going to be quite in the centre. This is why it's a wonky snowman. So it's going to be just slightly to the left. And this is a much smaller ball. So once I pop this in, I will <laughs> size of my thumb to the first joint or two to three centimetres. I don't normally measure, but for some reason today I am. Actually, that needs to be a little bit bigger. Let's make it three centimetres. There we go. So we've got our slightly drunk snowman. Ooh, should I do a bird collection? I mean, I've got, oh, oh no. I didn't move my lights. I have got I've got puffin already. And we've got well we've got far away eagle. We could do a close up eagle. Okay, so we've got drunk. Slightly drunk snowman. And now we need to make him less snowmanny unless you are going for the drunk snowman look. So we're gonna give him a little comb over. <laughs> there's no other way there's no other good way to describe it. In fact, let's pop him there so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> eggnog? <gasps> now I've never had eggnog. Can I have some eggnog? <sighs> yes please. That sound, it does sound delicious. So we're taking, oh sorry I got distracted. <laughs> I'm distracted by the comment. Um, if you're watching this after the fact hit the button like down below here somewhere that says live comments and you can see who I'm responding to and I'm not just talking to myself. Oh, is, do they do a non-alcoholic version of eggnog though? They must do, surely. There's the kids version. So I've taken the brown and I'm just going over the top of his head and down his back, just at the sort of edge of the white. You can actually see some of the white still poking through, but I'm going to cover that up. But you want it to be not behind him, you want it to be on the white. Because that's his little wings and his tail coming down there. And then his little comb over there. And you can see I'm slightly, so I'm not putting any pressure in, but I'm brushing it partially to go in the right direction. I don't know if I've ever had brandy. It was port for me and that did and that's what did me in and I stopped drinking. There we go. And we've got a slight a drunk M shape. Now, now, ooh, just I keep knocking these lights over. So just now we're still very much blocking in the colours. This isn't going to be perfect just now, but I want to get all the bits in place so that we can figure out, or we can like get the details in later. So don't worry if it looks like a mess. It will look like a mess just now. I mean, mine still looks a bit like a mess. I've still got to do work on that. But we're going to now take some red and fill in. Well, I say red, it's orange. Because although Robins are like Robin red breasts, they're normally orange. So we've got orange here. But you can do your, your uh, Robin any colour you like.
yes for still being in your PJs. I am not. I got dressed and I've been out of the house and done all the things. But as soon as I as soon as I finish this and I go home, I know where I'm what I'm getting back into. And that does mean taking off my house my, my house coat, my dressing gown, to get back into my pajamas. I'm just filling in his face and then just under halfway down his chest. I'm sure I had another story to tell. I don't have any interesting Robin facts. Also, I've only, <laughs> only just put two together. Robin and Robin. Hello. Oh, oh, don't touch the lights. Today is a very wonky setup. So does anybody mother <clears throat> have any or, or have you muted me any robin facts i do remember the movie what was it oh there was a movie of my childhood that the gardener had a little robin friend because robins i think mum mum will tell me if i'm wrong you used to have a robin that would follow you around the garden when you were digging to eat all the worms there we go so, so far, we've blocked in the background, we've made the wonky snowman, and now given, given him a comb, comb over and a mullet, yes, thank you. Oh, okay, so there's three types of robins, excellent. I, I, oh, did, did you name any of them, mum? Yeah, so we've given him a comb over. We've oranged up his face and his chest. And now we're going to, I think I'm going to work, put his branch there. And then we're going to work on his face. And then after that, it's just going to be, so this is a rough outline, like I said. We'll be tidying up the details and putting in little layers of colour and making them a little bit more interesting. So for the branch, I'm going to take the brown that we used for his body because I'm assuming like sort of camouflagey he would be the same colour as the trees around him so I'm just gonna I don't want it to be straight that's boring so I'm putting it at a slight angle just going up like that we've got one layer of the light brown and then we've got <laughs> good name so this oh I'm going to have to call this one Robbie then it's a very is it a Scottish name? I'm guessing or is this Rabby? this might be Rabby the Rabby the Robin or Robbie the Robin so I've taken some of the dark brown and I'm just putting it along the bottom of the twig I might even put a little knot in so I'm just squishing up some to make a little bit more texture. But then I don't want it's going to be quite harsh. So I'm going to layer some of the lighter brown over the, I know this sounds silly, over the dark brown we've just put there, but only a little bit. And that'll just add to the texture, a sort of woody grain texture. You can do the same again, so taking a little bit of light, just a tiny bit, putting it over. Oh, I haven't done this, but oh, if you want to put some snow on the branch, you could, oh, I might just, I reserve the right to be wrong and to take this away. I say this every time. You can put a little bit of snow like that. Ooh, that I might like this on top of the branch. That's pretty cool. 
Okay, that's going to stay there for a while. I might change it, I might not. Oh, and every so often just check that your robin fits nicely in the frame. I just love how he's just round and his little belly. Okay, I am just putting off doing the face now <laughs> entirely. I might work around the background for a minute more, then go back to the face. Oh, nice. Do you name them or are they all just Robbie? So I'm just going to go over this whole thing for a minute or two. You can see if you, I tend to not use the needle holder because it means I can pick up three or four at the same time and just go over it. Oh, he's <laughs> from Orange is attempting to escape. I'm not going to felt him too much because I want him to be nice and 3D. And if you want him to stick out a little bit more, you can. You can be, you can add to his belly. But I like to have that just not like super 3D, but just, I don't know if you can see it. There we go, just enough. This is where you can sort of fiddle with the background. I'm loving. Oh, I'm trying to steal the wool off your already picture. So you can add, when you add little thin layers, it just, it's like the blur tool you'd get on a oh and don't forget what I have forgotten every so often you want to pull him off give him a wee straighten up and pop him I am squinty pop him back down again okay let's be brave should we be brave I don't want to be brave let's <laughs> oh I've forgotten his legs I can distract myself with his legs so we're going to pop two little legs so he's not just float hovering above the uh, the branch. I kind of hoped Coolin would come in and I could like put his face here so you could see how cute he is. But I got so I'm putting one dot there as if he's at an angle. That makes sense. And the other one, just a little bit to the right and a little bit longer. Or do I want them to just be stand? Yeah, you want. I want one leg to be behind the other one. There we go. So they're not detailed legs. They're just the. <laughs> good name that works I mean I've just found out my friends called their puppy puppy which is genius I really want a puppy called puppy no I'm an adult I'm responsible <laughs> okay let's do his face we can do this so we're going to take the brown for his face the dark brown and we're going to make a tiny tiny eye so I've taken the tiniest tiniest splotch and I'm gonna scrumf all up one end like this I am leaving a slight tail there's a reason for this so that, that eye's a bit too big actually let's make it even smaller there we go so I'm leaving a slight tail there and this tail is the first thing I'm gonna poke in and then, so I've gone straight in the middle, which is not what you want to do. We want to go slightly more to the right. Poke it in. Now, the reason I left a tail, because sometimes it does this and just entirely disappears in. There we go. Might need a little bit more now. The aim is that the tail stops it going 
all the way in but still locks it in if that makes any sense whatsoever okay we have one eye but we need just a little glint in his eye I'm taking a tiny tiny you can't even see how tiny this bit is of the white I think I want his eye to be up just a tiny bit I'm gonna poke that white in just on one side there now remember I'm still going to go over bits of him but we're just going to and you're free to move this around and now he needs a little beak so again a tiny bit of the black or the dark brown I'm going to kind of I don't know if this makes any sense roll it into a cone shape but like a tiny cone shape and I am leaving a tail this time and I am going to probably end up I normally chop it off actually so I'm going to pop my tiny cone just there lock it in with that tail And then I'm going to take my handy dandy scissors and chop a bit of that off. And then poke in, because I want it to be anchored in so it doesn't fall out. I'm going to poke in that tail that we left, but leave the outer bit out, if that makes any sense. He's got a little bit of white that's escaped into his, into his nose. Let's remove that. There we go. So the face is going to look wonky just now. Do not worry. We're going to fiddle with it. Because I'm going to put some more colours in here. And the, it's, a, it's going to move. I just wanted to get a face in so that we've done it. We uh, pulled off the plaster. Oh, I mean, you would notice. <laughs> What's that cheeping noise? You could just say it was some kind of new toy that you couldn't turn off. So I'm gonna, oh, right. So I want to add a tiny bit of light and dark to his, oh, light's going again. Not too much, but just little bits of the darker brown. So maybe a tiny line just where the tail meets the body. Tail and the wings. So it's got like a little bit of definition, but we're going to add just little bits to give almost wing wing Fe feather that's, that's the word I was looking for like wings not the right word feather definition down his back just little light bits and dark bits we don't need to go too crazy although his tail is looking there uh, is missing quite a lot of feathers so I'm going to pop in a bit more of a tail there Hmm, wants to be slightly pointier. Oh, hiccup! There we go. And let's have a look at his orange. So just now, like the direction that I'm stabbing is just tidying up little bits and moving little bits about. I think I want his comb over to be quite so comb overy. That was a little bit excessive. Oh, look, his little face is starting to look cute. Looks slightly wonky on camera, but in real life, it makes a lot more sense. Now, the difference between him and him is he's got a little bit more body at the front, so I'm going to pop in 
a little bit more body. What else is different? I want a little bit more of a, a little tubby belly. Just going to pop that in there. And then I'll go over with a little bit more orange in a second. But it's also good to fade the orange in with the white. So putting some white over it and then orange over it and then white over it. Ad nauseum. There we go. It's got a little podgier belly. I like that. But everybody's robin will look unique. There's no right and no wrong robin. Oh, I think I hear. Do I hear movement from next door? Ooh, that's that's a fine. I think I want to squish him a little more. There we go. And his belly needs to come out more at the top. So put a little lump of orange there. I'm just playing now. So we're going to fiddle like this for a wee bit longer. Just adding in bits and things and stuff. And then I would say stop for the evening. And come back in a day or two. If you don't like it just now, I reckon if you leave it for a couple of days and come back, you'll like it then. Or if you... So one thing I like to do when... Oh! I like to knock lights over. Stay. <laughs> Is when I'm not sure if I like something or not, I take a photograph of it. Or I hold it up and look at a different angle. Because that kind of takes your eyes, refreshes your eyes a little bit and takes them away. And then you, you get a fresh perspective of it and you can see if you want to change anything. I mean, yours may be perfection right now. Who knows? In fact, they're all perfection because look how cute they are. But if you are not sure about it, that's really good. So I normally um, <laughs> send... A photo to my parents and then two minutes later send a completely different photo because I've changed everything because I've seen what I didn't like about the photograph okay what else do I want to do yeah I'm gonna do a little good f oh yeah so when you come I am very distracted there's a puppy next door uh, I just want to go and snuggle. He was being the goodest of the good boys today when we were out uh, chucking the ball around for about half an hour of him just solid running after the ball. He was, yeah, he thoroughly enjoyed it. But yeah, I'm just going to go over it all again. Stab, stab, stabbing. The more you do this, the more it locks it in and it sort of comes together, if that makes sense. I mean, I love the fluffy look. If you want to leave it as a fluffy look, you are more than welcome to. But stabbing it in and locking it all in sort of brings out the detail for me as well. Although I am again, I'm leaving him fluffy because we want him to be quite 3D. But I will come back to this in a day or two. I think it's because there's a line between his eye and his nose. Uh, let's just get rid of that.
that's better. I need, I need to sort out the top of his head. I'm now just mumbling to myself. Please, don't mind me. This is a fun bit. This is where it all starts to come together. And you made the cutest of the... the Ooh, what's the modern slang for a robin? Fluffy. I should have looked this up. Oh. Hello, light. You are my nemesis today. If I move you slightly. Stay. It's because, I mean, it doesn't help that the cord is running past my knee and I keep moving my knee, so therefore I'm moving the cord. Uh, to be fair, if the dog comes in, I'm going to get a light on my head. Not on him, he'll be fine. But, you know. I want more, more belly at this side. There we go. And you can, so if yours, like mine, my nose is, my nose is a little fluffy. I'm gonna, instead of felting it in, I will, especially with the tiny nose bits, just cheat and trim them off. Because I can. We're the adults now, we decide what to do. I think he's looking remar I don't know, he needs the orange needs to come down just a little further. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that. Just a little bit down there. Just blending it in again. So cute. He's just looking into the distance. Oh, I know what I need to show everybody. <laughs> I haven't done this in a while. Normally, because for the, this last year we've been doing get a tissue. Wait, why am I getting a tissue? What did I say? Oh, my fluffy nose. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> It's like working in a wool shop. It's just wool everywhere. It's always up my nose. <laughs> okay, because we've been doing uh, straight square pitches this last month, let's show you how to put them in a frame. See if I can remember how to put these in the frames. So the easiest is if you move it off of the uh, off of your mat, and you've got an inner circle and an outer circle, and you want to loosen it up so that. The two easily come apart and you want to open this. Am I still in focus? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Just want to open this so that it's as open as it can be without the bolt coming out. If the bolt does come out, that's okay. You can just close it up again. And, oh, she says. Hold on while I do this off camera. Don't watch me. Just pop that bolt right back on. Like so. There we go. And what you're going to do is put the solid circle underneath and kind of feel out. Is he kind of in the middle or is he where you want him to be? So he doesn't have to be in the middle. You've, because you've gone over the edges a little bit. Hopefully you've gone over the edges a little bit. You can move him about and find the right spot for him. So I want to move him up a little bit. And then all you do is just press that down so that it goes over the over the edge and then you're just gonna tighten that up so it's always good to do this every so often and just see what it looks like when it's finished awesome and now don't do this now but once you're completely happy and finished so in a couple of days you've come back you felted them all over you're really happy with them him or well, actually, the female robins, are they plain coloured, I think? 
you felted him all over you would turn this over once you've properly tightened it up and he's perfectly in place and then just chop all that extra off because we don't need that and then you would have if I hide all that you'd have your finished robin ready to be hung up like that but I'm gonna I'm not gonna do that just now I'm gonna pop this off and I'm gonna spend a little bit more a little bit more time felting him fiddling and then me and the puppy are gonna go home and watch it oh I'm kicking the table this time and <laughs> watch a movie tonight until he gets picked up If you want to make yours like more snowy or put mountains in the world is your mollusk let's see no i think i, I think i kind of want to leave it green or i could just do snowy mountain tops oh and i have a confession to make i am so sorry <laughs> the gnome Tartan gnome didn't work out, so he was abandoned. Well, he wasn't abandoned, he was finished. He just didn't have his tartan kilt on. There we go. I really like the white behind him. Just sort of that lovely. That Sort of wispy cloudy winter morning so the snow is on the top of the bend just now but it's not quite come down to our level there we go excellent uh, I want to put in <laughs> I keep staring at it and thinking like ah what do I want to fiddle with? Don't fiddle too much. I would say after the hour or so, just stop and give yourself a break. But so sort of come back in a day or two with fresh eyes and fresh hands. Just adding a bit more low lights there. I'm pretty happy with that. I like his lovely little cute belly. He's... <laughs> yeah, actually, oh, like a little tartan ribbon. That would be like, you can get quite wide tartan ribbons. Yes, good idea. Right. That'll be, I, I promise somebody remind me uh, next month to show you that the, we did the gnome last month the gnome with a little tartan kilt on oh but that's a thing so for my regular subscribers hello I love you all you're wonderful and amazing <laughs> um, I it's, it's been a year now so we another year has passed we did the round ones the first year. We've done a mostly square ones this year, apart from the odd differently shaped one, and we're back to a round one. What, sh what, what for next year? Have you got anything you would particularly like to do? I will, well, leave it in the comments below or in the Facebook group or ping me a message if there's anything you would like to see. I'm kind of tempted to do a flower. Some kind of, well, actually, we've done the thistle, but some kind of other flower. Or maybe Kelsey's idea about a series of verbs would be a good idea. Yeah, if there's anything that you think you would love to see felted in, in my unique and interesting style, <laughs> please let me know. I cannot guarantee that I will be able to... Oh! I think I gave you, did I give you another brown? I think I put in some other browns 
to pop in some shadows. Hopefully I did. Not brown. What colour is this? Green. So just sort of darken up little bits. Because we're not trying to make a focused background. We're just wanting the illusion of that fuzzy macro photograph of a bird standing on a branch. Ooh, violets. Oh, I'm going to have to Google what they look like. Don't say purple or violet. <laughs> I think I'm allowed to go away from just Scottish flowers, aren't I? Yes. Again, I'm just layering up the greens. I know it doesn't feel like it makes sense, but those depths of colour and the sort of randomness, <laughs> the randomness um, of the stabbing. Well, there's a flower I'm utterly in love with just now, but I uh, don't think I ever want to try and felt it, is hydrangeas. I, for some reason, I love, I, I think it's because I walk past, or I used to walk past them every day on the way to work, and I kind of miss them. Ooh, calla lily, calla lily, don't ask me to say that, or are pretty. <laughs> Yes. But you will have to put up with an hour of me trying to say calla lily. Oh, yeah, I am quite happy with how he's come. I, I'm actually really taken. I don't know if it shows up quite on camera as it does in real life because the lights do funny things to the felt how nice the little snowy top branches so you've got the option of no snow or snow or you can just put little bits mm, I think if you just put little bits of snow on it might look like you just pooped on it so maybe not but like a good splattering of snow and you can also put in branches so which way is the tree so if that branch is going up that way, the tree is there. So a second branch coming off might be like... So he's there. Yeah, you could pop a second branch coming off there if you wanted it. Oh yeah, I like that. Let's pop in a second branch. I know we're very late in the game, but this is my experiment time. You'd think I would plan in advance, but no, no. Let's pop in another little branch going off there, doing the same again, brown and then a little bit of dark on the bottom, that just makes it pop and that will be going out of frame there, so I don't need to actually put too much, it's a little bit thick, make that second branch a little bit thinner. And a little bit of snow on it. I'm actually going to leave that. There we go, going all the way across there. Okay, that's us pretty much on the hour. That's pretty good, pretty good going tonight, guys. Okay, A, I'm proud of you. I'm sure you've all done amazing robins let's pop him in a frame and see how he's looking and then me and puppy are gonna go and enjoy our evening and i'm gonna come back in a couple of days and finish him off and pop him finish the robin off and pop him in the frame 
And then he's going to go up on the wall. So about there. Pop that there. Give it a good... I'm doing this off camera. Give it a good tighten. Tighten? That's a word. And there we have... Can you see him? Is he... Is my camera squinty? There we go! We have... Robbie the Robin. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been wonderful and random as always. I thoroughly enjoy these Friday afternoons, Friday nights. Uh, I will see you next month, if not before. Thank you, my squishies. Have a good night. <laughs>